So I'm not, I'm not a try guy. And I think I finally know why, you know, that I'm mainly a bar spinner kind of guy. Because these tries, they're just, they're just too damn smooth. They're too damn smooth. They're, they are like little propellers, little propellers on your fingers. And I guess I just want something a little more, a little more rattle to it, a little more judder. Judder. Judder is what bar spinner guys and gals love, right? They love that feeling of the spinner trying to adjust to a new position on its axis, on its axis, axi, axis, on its axis, while you are moving it, right? And if you have a bar spinner, you only have, you know, two sides to it. It's a bar spinner. So you have 360 degrees, and then you have each arm of a bar, I'll grab any bar here, so I can point at it, of a bar spinner dealing with 180 degrees of the circle. So when something like this is changing on its axis, you feel more judder and feedback because it's trying to compensate more. It's only got two arms, so it feels something more when it's trying to compensate. But with something like a try, you've got a whole other extra arm in play now. So now it's 120 degrees on each arm of the 360. So that's the main reason that when you're changing this around, you don't really feel judder, you just feel this gyroscopic sort of effect going on, which in and of itself is great. It is really great. But I don't know what it is. I just don't grab my tries as much. Speaking of which, this is the last try I have. This is the Tungsten uh, Axis Micro S from Focusworks. I'll give you a weight on it right away here. It's less than you think. This being mostly tungsten, mostly I'll let you know why. So 118 grams. I thought it would be more. I really did. Uh, this is more of like the mid-size one. There is a mini that's been done and then the original uh, slightly bigger one. So this is like a mid-size with like a two inch diameter um, radius, two inch diameter circumference, I guess on the spin, spin diameter. Right? It's been diameter. Anyway, tungsten all around, tungsten balls pressed in there, uh, but it is a tungsten disc here. And this part, take this button off so you can see, is stainless steel. So that would have taken down a bit of the weight. So all this part under here, that's all stainless steel as far as I know. And it's this part here, the circle, that's been pressed into there and that's the tungsten bit right there you can even still see a bit of adhesive right there on the edge anyway uh that's not like a big negative or anything but i've heard some people say they wish uh everything would have been tungsten but i look at this because you've got dedicated threading here because it's a um, retention fit system and i don't know freaking dedicated dedicated threading on tungsten, I'm gonna say that's why it's uh, it's stainless steel. It's I, I think that's too hard to machine, um, and it's too risky. And you know something happens and it breaks, and you're starting all over again, wasting tungsten. So that would be my uh, guess, and I'm 90% sure I'm right on that. And that's why that's why that happened. So I think it could have been tungsten, but it would have had to be um, with its own post, not dedicated threading. So then speaking of the retention fit system in this spinner, you get this special tool and it's so easy to do. Like there's no glue or anything like that. And I'm just turn that out like that. Uh, if you, whoa, my air freshener just went off. <laughs> uh, if you lose, if you lose a tool, that's going to be, it's going to be a bit different there. I would be, uh, I'd be like uh, PM and Jordy and getting him to send you send you another one because that's a very specific sort of tool. There are retention ring uh, pliers. They're like pliers that come out and you can just like open them and then they have these little points and they go and they stick into retention ring, things like this. So you could use something like that, but hey, it comes with its own little custom tool. So 
why not? And then the bearings just uh, pretty much popping right out of there. Can't remember which one I have in here. Yeah, one of the one of the operator ones. Um, that's it. So easy. So there's something about something about retention ring spinners that I've had. I think they've all been tries. Yes, and for some reason they just fly. I don't know if that's to do with the retention system itself, but oh my god, they just fly. It's uh. It's crazy. So you get really crazy warps out of these things. Um, do I have a warp video of this? I probably do. Warp videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one right here. Okay, so see it. <laughs> that, it's crazy. So it's already warping, and that's from me doing a doing a flick spin. And then all I did was I flicked. And you can flick it right into a warp, like, instantly. It's crazy. So that's the lower speed warp right there. That's the lower speed warp, and you get a bit of a clearer look at it. When it's in the higher speed warp, that's it, um, like the first one, when it was doing it, it, that's that's from the flick, right? So that one, this could go into a high speed warp. I'll slow it down. So there, now it's going into its high speed, and then I'll take it out of the warp. Let's see if I can do this. Keep slowing it down. Keep slowing it down. Slowly tapping it, and then. I do the other one. Very delicate. There. And there's the lower speed. The lower speed warp right there. So that's what I'm saying. It's like these things go so fast that you can hit two warp zones. And I found that a lot with retention systems. It's uh it's kind of interesting that way. Yeah, just smooth as heck. Very fidgety. So it's weird that I don't grab it as much. I don't know what it is, but... It is a lot of fun. One other thing that uh, had to be mentioned that some people were talking about is that these balls weren't pressed all the way through. See this? See how it's like... It's gone in this way, the press, but hasn't quite come through all the way. So there's a difference there. It's nothing that's affecting any of the any of the spinning, right? There's no there's no wobble. There's nothing going on like that. But it is one of those things that apparently all the other ones have been put all the way through. Um, I don't have a full answer from Jordy himself as to why it was done that way with these ones, but. Apparently, that was the choice for this entire batch of these. Another thing that some people are talking about is that, I mean, balance isn't all there. It's there. There's like one side that... Yeah, it's that one. And I've heard this from some other people as well. That, I think, mainly is that you're dealing with these ball bearings that you're putting in there. So it's this one, right, that's going to be a little bit heavier. So that could have nothing to do with the actual machining of the body, but it could be that ball bearing for whatever reason is just the composition of the tungsten or whatever. Because it's a sintering, right, that they have to do, and it's not always perfect. Another thing that people have talked about is just the buttons here. It can be a bit, like, there's a sharp edge. I believe it's right... It's my little pokey tool. Okay. Uh, it's this edge right here on that one. Not this edge, but it seems to be this edge. Your finger, and you always notice it like when you're spinning like this, and then you go to like bring it over this way, you'll feel your thumb almost catch a little bit right there. And it's not that like 
it's not a painful thing or anything like that. It's just it catches you off guard. In a way, it actually improves grip, I've found. So that's something. But um, the buttons, for that matter, are just like the perfect size dish. They are 23s, I believe, in diameter. So they work great with it. It's just this thing just perches anywhere you want. And I don't know, like, it's just it's weird. It's weird I don't grab it. I don't know. I'm just sitting here doing this review and like fidgeting the crap out of this thing. And then of course being a try, the flickability of it, right? Like I was saying, just flicking it right into a warp is just, that's so cool to me. Just sit there and flick it all day. Yeah. Very cool little thing. Um, worth the $400 that I spent? No, it's not. Uh, I would say more, this is more like a, you know, standard sort of like 300, 350 or something like that. But I think at the end of the day, I was spending something like was shipping like over 400 US on this, right? Um, and this is made in Canada. Very close to me. So that's, that's the increase in the price is made in Canada, not, um, not to China, like a lot of the uh, tungsten stuff is, and that's how we're getting it for like 300 or something like that. But um, I guess a lot of people would have expected and they were hoping that, you know, for that increased price, we were going to get something like, you know, perfectly balanced and, you know, the ball bearings are going to be all the way through and even that way um, and that kind of thing, right? But otherwise, it's a pretty, pretty slick little guy. Yeah, I mean, if you like tries, I would definitely try to find one of these. But if any of the things that I've mentioned bug you, then yeah, you know what to do. Anyway, that's my little uh, little spiel on the uh, Tungsten Axis Micro S by Focusworks. And there she be. Okay, have a good one. Bye.